Good morning, everybody. I'm Wolfgang, and I got really inspired by Alex's presentation because he's, he's really stayed intentionally on the hardware side. While we have, uh, we are facing a new era of question marks right, when it comes to the applications for uh, for this field. Okay, let me try. Thank you. And uh, so what, what we we are doing for many years now, and this idea basically started in Sun Microsystems when great people there said, so what you now brought into Sun, try to bring it to the masses. Right? So at, at that time it was workload managers, uh, which turned into, 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 into Univac Grid Engine now. And uh, so this continued all uh, for the sake of the running the applications on different systems very, very, very efficiently. Right? So that's where we landed in the container land, obviously, which provides seamless, easy, intuitive access, not only to the application, but to the whole hardware, which we have seen from Alex here, for example. But we still, he said really rightly, uh, there is no one solution fits all. Right? It is uh, when you work with uh, simulations, you know, there are different AI tools, different deep learning tools for different application areas. So you have to evaluate this, and in uh, this regard, our community is really at the very beginning. Uh, I mean, as you can imagine, when you have these powerful HPC containers now, uh, you uh, want to equip them with uh, deep learning algorithms. But I counted 24, so how do you automate this? And that's the status where we are now. Very, very exciting. Right? We do a lot of experiments because uh, there's uh, not a lot of literature out there. <clears throat> the same way we started like seven years ago with these HPC containers. So there's not a, much, not, not a lot of literature out there. So you have to do these experiments. Right? Work with the community, work with the researchers, and take it then to like the doctors who should apply these things for the sake and the benefit for the patients. So that's what you will see here, right? And uh, I'm so grateful for this community here. <laughs> yeah, to Earl and team, and to Rupak and team uh, for these international, very precious awards. So we were over overwhelmed in November, as you know, you know, we were really going like, uh, what, what happens here, right? And uh, yeah, but this is what, what's driving us among others, right? It's uh, obviously. So we have this one little add-on, which is for the masses, right? And we have the technology. We are absolutely convinced we really see that. Now, it works everywhere in all these 18 different verticals which you guys have identified, containers, containers, containers. When you look at the big companies uh, like HPE and others, I mean, containers are everywhere through all departments now, right? And uh, there is now infrastructure underneath, like Kubernetes and other beautiful tools, which glue everything together. Right? So we are in a new era. And I said, yeah, new era of uh, a lot of question marks. But we take one by one by one <clears throat> and try to remove it. So that's so exciting. In this, it's, it's, it's becoming now a real big project. There are more and more partners joining. The po core partners here are still Advania in Iceland, Dassault System, with a ton of very good software and a vision, uh, a great vision. And uh, then uh, those guys who have money, HPE and Intel, who are interested in moving that towards the masses, who fund this project. Really grateful for that. And then we have the users, obviously. Again, visionaries who really, really drive the whole thing to the edge. And I really, yeah, uh, half, 50% of when I say edge is exactly in uh, Alex's sense. Right? It is uh, a lot of these for the masses happens now more and more at the edge. Right? OK, so, and the core technology we use, we have developed, is the HPC container. I don't have to talk a lot about this. I was uh, uh, very gracious about the, uh, 
uh, also the invitation last year, where I went into detail uh, on that space. You have seen these next three, four uh, slides already, but they fit into uh, my uh, topic, right? Because this, this was the first big eye opener when we started working into this, into this field, into personalized healthcare. And uh, we didn't believe that you could do with super high performance computing, you could, could do personalized healthcare. It's almost a contradiction. You know, personalized here, and then the big supercomputer there, right? And then, then that's when, when we thought uh, most of these uh, uh, colleagues at the edge, like doctors, like lawyers, with one of the other uh, innovation awards, uh, they don't have access to big supercomputers. Uh, they might have access to 10, 16 compute nodes which they can pay for one hour in the cloud. And they now do, at least in these uh, examples here. Okay, so as I mentioned, great partners. And it's all about, about HPC as a service. It's not anymore about HPC as a machine which you have to buy, but it's really everything turned into a service. Yeah? It's complete, it's fully integrated these days. And HPE, Intel, and Microsoft helped us a lot with that. It is self-service. So you as the end user, you come in, you type in login password, and then you are within your famous, your famous certainly, as my favorite environment, uh, which you're very, uh, well aware of. Uh, you used it already for 10 years. It's now packaged in a little nice container. But uh, within the container, we didn't touch anything. It, it, we took it from here to there. Okay, so there is all this good stuff, and I move on because I only have 15 minutes. And but you will get the message, and this is amazing with Stanford. So uh, Francisco Sali from Stanford under Ellen, Professor Ellen Kuhl, uh, he was able to identify 42 drugs uh, and uh, did simulations with uh, the uh, uh, Simulia Living Heart Project model and uh, found out that several of these drugs cause arrhythmia. Uh, and usually you find out in clinical studies with humans and with animals. But this one removes that ethical burden, right? So here, this is really all simulations. And these simulations, 42 drugs, were identical to what has been found previously in experiments, in trials, right? So there is a 100% per per percent, uh, uh, identity between uh, the, uh, okay, so this is a ECG. So the electrocardiogram uh, on top is a healthy heart with a drug which works nicely. And this is one with sotalol. In certain cases, it really causes, instead of damping down, it causes arrhythmia. So, I mean, you really should know this beforehand, right? And with the doctor's information about the patient's personal heart, he can really predict that. Yeah? So he can really select the right drug. You know, one drug which works well with one patient A, another, uh, the same drug doesn't work with patient B. So it's very important that you do a personalized health care and, and investigation. Okay, you know these pictures. I, 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 so the left, left one is the healthy one. You see it's really nicely, regularly bumping, and already after the first bump, this one goes crazy. This is simulation, right? So, okay. So now I come to the next one, which won this year's award, uh, the uh, Innovation Excellence Award from uh, the HPC Forum and uh, supported by Hyperion. Uh, and that, that's even, I would say, more, it's even easier now to take this into very personalized healthcare. You, you will see the reasons why. So, uh, it's a, it, this is our UberCloud experiment, 200. We are now at 214 in the meantime. The community doesn't let us stop these experiments. They are all free, and we uh, put a team together, and we do these very nice things. Okay, you start, uh, you know, with a scan, a, with a, you know, a heart scan, a brain scan, a uh, knee scan, or whatever, right? So that's the personalized thing. It is the one from a, from a person, from, from, a, from a patient. And then uh, you build a model. Uh, we do this with uh, uh, simpleware. 
So Simpleware has a lot of, uh, there's a software uh, a company which has a ton of very nice, uh, partially, for example, finite element models, uh, which uh, then you can build from the scan. So you have a personal model in a, a, as a next step. And then you uh, run software over it like um, uh, Abacus. Abacus with additional elements or modules for electromagnetism, for example, electrical uh, impulses, etc. So with that, you find electrode placements. Uh, you know how they did it in the past? Let me switch over. Yeah, in the past, they dig, they drilled small holes into your skull, partially damaging the brain. I mean, uh, we don't have so much, right? So it's kind of dangerous. Uh, we want to be very careful. But that's how they still do it. That's, that's the traditional way. They dig holes in it, they put some 70 millivolt uh, at it, and then the uh, patient steers with her remote control. Uh, whenever a, an attack, a schizophrenia attack, for example, is coming on, then they steer it, and after two, three minutes, they slow down and relax again. So they completely avoid the schizophrenia attack. So that's, that's how they did it in the past. Very expensive. You have to go in the hospital. It takes one month, and it costs $30,000, and uh, it's bloody and, uh, in, in the real sense. And, uh, but it helps. OK. Yeah? The, 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 the most important thing is you have to identify this little origin of uh, schizophrenia in your brain. If you have that, then you can do either that, but also uh, people at Nimhans National Institute for Medical Health, uh, the group leader just received the Indian Nobel Prize for that right? uh, in, 20, in 2018. So a little bit after we received that prize. So basically, you guys confirmed uh, that he did great stuff. And, and as you see, I mean, we, it, it, we just provide the tools. Right? We are so lucky. We are not the real... Uh, Nobel Prize, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, 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 candidate, yeah, now I got the candidates of, but we just, we just provide the tools, glue everything together, build a team around this, and then uh, the next step we did this one, non-invasive, because these guys in Bangalore, they found out, uh, as part of a larger community, obviously, that uh, the same effect you can get from putting outside electrodes on the skull. Right? But again, what is very important is you have to find the exact location so that you get the best suited influence from uh, uh, these 70 millivolt impulses. Right? OK, this is non-invasive. As I said, this is $30,000. This is $1,000. This is one month in the hospital. This is half an hour. Uh, um, in the doctor's office. Right? I mean, this is huge, right? Uh, and uh, so if we go closer, so there is an uh, international atlas, a map uh, for your brain, which uh, basically then uh, you do the simulations in all these points. Right? So when you know somehow the origin of schizophrenia is here, so what you do then is you use a combination, you know, it's four electrodes which you put on, uh, on top of the skull. Then you, you move this around for each of the placement you do a simulation. Right? And uh, such a simulation, okay, so these, these are uh, like uh, scans which clearly show the origin of schizophrenia. There's a lot of uh, electricity, of heat, which you can easily measure, which is nice. Uh, and uh, again, now HPC as a service. Uh, apply, apply to that one uh, very quickly, and I know I have to run. 26 abacus drops, very fine, finite element mesh uh, we got from Simpleware. And, uh, and what, what we try hard to do is we, we try to use the smallest equipment possible. Because again, not everybody can buy a supercomputer, so can you do it even ideally? Fine. Ideally, with uh, just your laptop also. And in fact, you can. You know, if you have 26 colleagues who run 
the same software for different 26 different combination, combinations of uh, or, or locations of these uh, four electrodes. Then, uh, okay, so you end up something like uh, maybe on your laptop it's two hours, right? Okay, which is not, so, not such a problem because you can do it in parallel, right? These simulations are completely independent. So you already with your 26 colleagues, uh, you get a factor of 26, right? Because it's completely then Okay, so uh, if, you, if you are lucky and use the latest so software in the cloud, which is often a benefit using the cloud that you get easily the latest software, uh, that's the latest hardware, excuse me, the latest uh, instances. And then, so here, you, we first got a factor of 20, 26, uh, 2.6, and then another speed up. So from 33 hours, we pushed it down to 28 minutes. And that is ambulant. You can do that, really. Uh, uh, you can do that really here. So, okay, I think that's kind of the message. Uh, ne next step is, very quick, apply deep learning. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what we did then, uh, not with this example, but we started with an earlier example because we are in a learning phase. So we took a CFD uh, application, we took OpenFOAM, and uh, a, a student of uh, uh, the K K Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, he ran 1,000 simulations for uh, convex objects. And uh, with that 1,000, we trained TensorFlow and predicted uh, the uh, uh, flow field around it just within uh, uh, an accuracy, so to 67, 68%. And they were not satisfied, and then they said, okay, come on to the cloud, we do 70,000 for you. And we pushed it up to 96, 97% accuracy. Prediction. Now the result of that is, which is here, okay, the time for training, okay, so 10,000 simulations are here as an example, and very quickly what you see here with prediction and an accuracy of about 95, 96% uh, accuracy, you can get a factor yeah, of 1,500. Right? So the, one, the factor of 100 over there before and an additional factor of that one. And uh, this is an amazing result. If you can give that into the hands of the doctor, then uh, yeah, you won. Okay, thank you so much. And key takeaways, I already said that. And the slides are, the key takeaways, the slides are available, right? Okay, thank you so much. And sorry for the, I think, yeah, five minutes. <laughs>